When you're talking Martha Josie, you're talking about a living legend. She impacted barrel racing as nobody else has. Watch that turn off that second barrel. I'll tell you one thing, because she is an excellent rider. There'll never be another Martha Josie. Ever. She's going to do it again tonight. Take a run at her. All right, Lynn, she's placing every go so far. Nice run for Martha. 1474. It takes a legend to make the national finals rodeo for four decades. Not only did she win world championships, she took that knowledge and passed it on to other people. Hundreds of thousands of lives have been touched. How many little girls are going to remember Martha Josie and what she's helped them do in their career? Martha definitely had to overcome a lot of odds in her life. Medical doctors telling her, you may never walk again. I think that adversity brings out the best in a person. You can do anything you want to if you want it bad enough. This is what it's going to take. Martha Josie, Martha Josie. She is a Cinderella story. Horses are the greatest thing that can happen to people. Even as a little girl, that's all I wanted to do was ride, ride, ride. When you say Martha Josie, you're talking about a rider. You are talking about barrel racing, and she trains probably some of the greatest barrel horses in the world. One of the most special times in Martha's life was the 1980 NFR. You know, she's actually competing against people that she helped train. Get ready with Lynn McKenzie now. I tell you what, look at this horse run. This first NFR was... Lynn McKenzie and I are nick and tough. She's a student, so I'm really proud of her, but I want to beat her. Every young girl's dream, I think, is to make the NFR. At the end of the 10 rounds, whoever's got the most money won is your world champion. It was down to the 10th run, and that's when it's pretty exciting. I'm thinking, I want this run, and I, I want it bad. It is the toughest. We drive thousands and thousands of miles for 16 seconds. You're in the road 24 hours a day. You stop, you fuel up, you have blowouts, you have trailer malfunctions, you have horse malfunctions. 16 seconds into it, and it's over. When I was born, my dad was in the quarter horse business and brought the very first quarter horse into East Texas. My memories of daddy and I would ride down into the meadows and the cornfields. He loved horses and he really instilled it in me. You know, he wanted me to be a cowgirl. Dad, he passed away when I was only 10 years old. It was very hard because being a daddy's girl, it really took a toll on me. And my mother actually had to sell all the horses and we had no way to take care of them. But she kept one stallion, thinking that someday maybe I could get to ride again. And then one day, I went to a rodeo in Shreveport, Louisiana. And I thought, I don't belong up in the stands. I belong down there with the horses. The next day, I hunted up my daddy's old roping saddle. My horse had not been out of the stall for eight years. Put that saddle on and found an old rusty barrel, and I started barrel racing. And my dream was to be that champion that my daddy wanted me to be. I said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be a cowgirl. Barrel racing was just really getting started. Cowgirls were wanting to do something, and they knew that it was going to be hard riding bulls and broncs, but I did some of that too. Back then, the girls just went and had a good time and said, well, we're going to do something, too. So they invented the sport. Three barrels and the fastest horse wins. 
My mother had an old Buick that had 300,000 miles on it. I rented a trailer for $5 every time I'd go anyplace. I just had that drive, and the barrel racing just really came kind of natural. At that time, my mother and I was living in my grandmother's house, and it burnt. Everything we had was in that home. That was a hard time in my life. For a senior in high school, that was very traumatic to lose your home and everything you had. Anytime you have the low, you need to go to the high. I thought, I've still got my horse. I'll still ride. And I made up my mind I could do everything I wanted to. In spite of the difficulties that had occurred, and I shouldn't use the, such a word as difficulty when I'm speaking of losing your house and of losing your father, such a benign word, no. In spite of the disasters which had occurred in her life, she could have quit. That's not in her. One day, a gentleman called me. He said, I know you can ride. Your daddy was the best horseman in the world, and I've got a horse named C.B. Reed, and I think you need to come and get him. Then I said, what do you want for this horse? He said, 5,000. I said, I'll give you 2,500. He said, okay. And I almost fainted because I didn't have $25, let alone 2,500. I went home to my mother and I was crying and I said, Mama, I just bought C.B. Reed for 2,500. She said, Baby, I leased my land for all today for 2,500. You can have that for your horse. I knew that that was all the money that my mother had. I said, Mother, you need the money. And she said, No, I want you to have that horse. And that's how I got C.B. Reed. CB was just a different horse. He wasn't really trained very good. And at first, we'd go around the first barrel, out the arena he'd go. The first few rodeos I went to, everybody said, boy, I don't know why you bought that horse. Then I started working with him, and he started getting better and better and better. He would run as fast as he could to a barrel, slide on his rear end, and turn so quick, but he never hit barrels. The first win was at a quarter horse show. I won it by over two seconds. My next show I went to was the American Royal at Kansas City. Everybody came running up to me and said, you just broke the record at the American Royal. Well, then I knew that I had a good horse. You know, I've always said what makes a great barrel racer is a good horse and she really capitalized on that. If you don't have four legs underneath you that can compete, you can't win. A lot of cowboys didn't really think much about the barrel racing back then, but when C.B. would run, they'd all come to the arena to watch him because he had such an outstanding style. What made that horse special is when all the chips were on the table, you could count on it. He was impressive. Didn't make many mistakes. And uh, he and Martha, they were a team. I had won the Texas Barrel Racing Association 1964, 65, 66, and 67. My first NFR was in 1968. I won 52 barrel races in a row. I won seven horse trailers. That horse and I were such a connection, and the way that we got the horse and the way that it all happened, it all just fell in place.
John Grady had a vision, a dream that could not fail. He was born One day, I went to a roping and barrel racing. There was a calf roper there, and it was R.E. Josie. Well, he'd won the roping at Hillsboro. Of course, I'd won all the barrel racing. He said, uh, do you want to go on a date tonight? I really think that he was after my horse. You'd find a good jockey, but a good horse hard to come by. <laughs> it was kind of love at first sight. Born to ride with destiny. Born to be a cowboy. You not only got me, you got my horse, too. Oh, that's what I was after. <laughs> we ended up getting married down here in Karnak, Texas. I said, well, you're winning, I'm winning. Let's go have a rodeo school. He said, a rodeo school? We kind of laughed about it. We decided to try it. That was in 1967, and we had 33 students. Four different girls ended up going to the national finals from that first clinic that we had. So that was really an honor. We started with a week-long school, and it progressed to where we had so many people wanting to come and be taught by Martha and Josie. We had to go to two-week schools. That progressed even further. We just couldn't continue turning people down. Now, you got to understand, at that time, Martha and Josie were going up and down the road. They were trying to qualify for the NFR every year. If you didn't make the NFR then, it would be really disappointing. She did not like to lose. CB, he started to kind of slowing down a little bit, but after riding a Cadillac like CB, it was hard to get on other horses. He could beat them back then. He could beat them today if he ran. He was just something special. He was 25 when he passed away here at the Josie Ranch. Saying bye to the greatest horse in the world, it was very hard. It's like losing your best friend but you know they're in heaven taking another barrel racer around, so you look for that next horse. And when Sonny came along, it was unbelievable. Sonny bit of both. He was one of the first horses that I got to see Martha run, and he was a great horse, and he had a lot of heart. To me, he didn't look like he was really going that fast but he was so smooth that he could stop the clock. Now Martha Josie, Karnak, Texas. She's gonna do it again tonight, take a run at him. I tell you, look at the heart in this horse. That's just what it's gonna take. Martha Josie makes very few mistakes in her career. That's why she is one of our great world champions. I was blessed to have the opportunity to have Sonny after CB. They were totally different, but they were both winners. Martha seems to have a good handle on it, but she's got a clean third turn. Yes, she does. We made the National Finals Rodeo in 78, 79, and then in 1980, that was the year I said, I'm going to go try to win the world. When you say Martha Josie, you're talking about a rider. You are talking about barrel racing, particularly. I had gone to a lot of rodeos and a lot of quarter horse shows. I'll tell you what, she's going into the second barrel, real tight. I ended up winning the American Quarter Horse Association, their championship. The most prestigious award that a quarter horse can win, and that's the world championship. At that time, I'm qualified for the NFR, and I think, well, okay, now I've won this one. Do I really need to try to win the other one? Of course. I get to the national finals. Lynn McKenzie and I are nick and tuck. She's a student, so I'm really proud of her, but I want to beat her. It was down to the 10th run, and all I've got to do is not to hit a barrel. You know, most people would have gone out there and gave a lot of room and been cautious, not Martha. 
first barrel. Sonny slips. I barely get him over for the second barrel. She is hustling this horse through the pattern like her life depended on it. And that's what makes her special. She goes for it. I'm thinking, I want this run and I, I want it bad. I asked the policeman, did I win? He said, they just called out, Martha Josie won. And then I threw up my hands and I had actually won the world. Congratulations, it's been a long haul for you. Tell me, how does it feel to be that world champion barrel racer? Oh, it feels great. And I've just got to thank the Lord and my husband and my mom all at one time today, thank you. It's special to be able to win the WPRA world as well as the AQHA in the same year. Sonny was the only horse in history to ever win both. That record still stands today. My dad, he was looking down on me and, and realizing that, yes, I was doing everything he wanted me to do, and I was really fulfilling that dream that he had for me. It was wonderful. After I won the world in 1980, I came home and I was riding a young horse. Something spooked him, he threw me. I woke up in the hospital in really, really bad shape. Broke this right arm, broke my pelvis in several places. First thing the doctor said, you definitely will never ride again, and you will probably never walk again. That was really devastating. Now I'm in a wheelchair. Medical doctors looking at her condition uh, and telling her, you know, this is really bad. But they didn't know who their patient was. They didn't know it was Martha Josie. A lot of people would give up. You never want to give up. The first thing that I thought, well, I've got to keep Sun in shape because I'm going to be out of this wheelchair. With Josie's positive attitude, first thing he'd tell me was, you can do anything you want it if you want it bad enough. She didn't let her defeat get her down, you know. She come right back. He took me to the very best specialist you could find, and we made a swimming area for Sonny. And I'd go down in my wheelchair on one side, Ari on the other, and we'd swim in. She had some rehab people coming to the home, and I made house calls. She worked hard at that rehab. And it was amazing in what a short time she did. In about three or four months, I was able to get out of the wheelchair. It was a miracle recovery. And I knew the minute that I could get out of that wheelchair that I could ride again. First time I got back on Sunday, it just made all the pain go away. And Ari was already ready. I think he was sitting in the truck ready to go right then, saying, I think you need to go back to the national finals one more time on Sunday. I was thinking, it's going to be hard to get to the national finals because I had to catch up. First rodeo we went to after my recovery, we won. You know, it really is an incredible story, Martha Josie. She's been to 11 national finals rodeos, and she's done it on separate different horses. We went to Walla Walla, Washington. We won that. 
We went to Ellensburg, Washington. We won that. We went to Piala, and we won that one. Three big wins. They caught up after missing three months when everybody else was rodeoing. Together, Sonny and I went back to the national finals the fourth time in 1981. Here I am having such a bad accident back at the national finals. That was another big accomplishment in my life. winning. I love the road, but now I love the teaching. When we started our school in 1967, we had no idea that we would still be doing it 51 years later. I feel like we're giving back to a sport that has given us so much. Okay, when you get to that first barrel, what do we say? And then what? Wait. Good. Y'all will remember that today? Okay, good. The things you see in rodeo today with women in rodeo creating their own clothing lines and having this incredible fan base, if you look back, Martha started all of that. Every little kid that's had a dream has been to Martha Josie's clinic. So many of our students have gone on to become world champions, and when they win, we win. Martha Josie's my idol. She taught me. They've opened up their lives to whoever wants to learn. There it is, a world champion. What a story. My goal is I want to win the world, and I just want to be like Martha mostly. <laughs> I'll try. The whole thing has been fun, fun, fun. And I love the teaching. Ari loves teaching. You know, we plan to do this for a long time, long as we can. Nobody can imagine going to the NFR for four different decades. She has that drive, and I guarantee you, if she had the right horse today, she'd be back out there on the road trying it one more time. What we really want to be remembered for is having something that will help people not only excel in their barrel racing or calf roping, but in life. They're just the greatest people in the world. There's nothing, there's, I don't think there's anything else you can say about them. Mm -hmm.